I'll read the last line first. Which of the following findings is expected to be present if electron microscopy of the biopsy sample is performed, right? So I noticed the pathology question. It is, uh, I have supposed to know the electron, electron microscopy findings. Okay. Uh, so there's a 45 year old man. Uh, quickly go through the important top uh, points. 45 year old man, facial puffiness, mild swelling on his lower back. So he's edema. Uh, denies chest pain, blood and urine, or fevers. Uh, Diagnosed recently with colon cancer. Uh, PP is normal, pulse normal, temperature normal, respiratory normal, nothing significant. Physical examination shows mild puffiness, uh, facial puffiness, which is spitting, and there's pre sacral edema. Systemic findings are normal. Uh, pH is relatively acidic to normal. Uh, this is considered normal because up to 5.5, you do not consider uh, a pathologically acidic urine. Right? Uh, so the color is light yellow, which is also normal. There's no RBC. Uh, there are three to four WBCs, which is still considered um, normalish. Then, uh, but there is four plus protein, so there is proteinuria. You know, there's proteinuria. You know, they are talking about something that has something to do with glomerulus, right? Uh, they are cast over fat bodies, so there is lipiduria. Uh, glucose is absent, crystals are none, ketone is absent, nitrite absent, 24-hour urine excretion is high. Proteinuria, lipiduria, nephrotic syndrome. You have that in your head. Now. There's a nephrotic syndrome that I biopsied, and I want to know which type of nephrotic syndrome it is. Okay, so we'll look for clues. Uh, it is a 45 year old man, so you rule out minimal change disease. Uh, okay, I, what I'll do is I'll go for the options and then we'll rule out. Okay, so uh, basket weave appearance of glomerular basement membrane seen with Alport syndrome. So we are ruling that out, right? Basket weave. Uh, uh, Appearance is because uh, there is antibody formation to the type 4 collagen, and collagen is present in such a way that the antibody is deposit and on immunofluorescence, you'll see a uh, basket weave appearance. Uh, then, effacement of food process seen with minimal change disease, uh, which is, is not the case here. It presents in children majority. Uh, children up from 2 to 8 years of age are most likely to have a minimal change disease, which will show effacement of food process. So we're ruling that out. Uh, coming to subepithelial humps. Uh, subepithelial humps are seen with PSGN, this post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Um, we could suspect that, but the patient it does not have a fever, does not have a history of fever or pharyngitis or any skin lesions that need to be worried about. And he does not have hematuria or hypertension. Because we all know PSGN causes nephritic syndrome. Nephritic would have immature or hypertension, right? So none of these findings are present. So subepithelial humps is also ruled out. Uh, then we have spike in dome appearance. It is seen with membranous nephropathy. Uh, that causes a nephrotic syndrome. It causes that in adults. And one more point that is uh, favoring this answer is that the patient has a history of colon cancer. Any solid tumor. Uh, or uh, systemic disease like SLE or rheumatoid arthritis or any such diseases would favor a membranous nephropathy or membrane of proliferative nephropathy. What happens in this case is the circulating antibodies and immune complexes going on in our body. Whenever there's a solid tumor, there are immune complexes formed against that. You know, tumor is considered as a foreign body lab. So there's tumor induced immunity that develops in a person. These immune complexes form in systemic diseases, again, immune complexes form, and they deposit in the membrane, causing uh, immune, not only immune complex deposition, but they also exaggerate uh, proliferation of the membrane. So uh, what happens is, when you look in the electron microscopy, there is the GBM, there is the uh, epithelial food, uh, podocyte food processor, the epithelium that we're talking about, the immune complex is deposited everywhere, and in between the immune complexes, there is a proliferation of the membrane. So that causes a spike and dough. Spike and dough. Okay. So this is not seen in case of PSGN, where there's only immune complex deposition. So there are just subepithelial humps that you see. You do not see spikes there. Um, and lastly, of course, we have massive amyloid deposition and specular aggregates, which is seen in amyloidosis. That is common with uh, chronic disorder. It could be AA amyloidosis or AL amyloidosis. AA as seen with uh, rheumatoid arthritis and other systemic diseases, and AL with multiple myeloma. Okay, M many other kinds of amyloidosis. 
So in our case, the answer is spike and dome. If there are any questions or any topic or any part you would want me to elaborate, please put it in the chat box. Otherwise, we'll move forward. Okay, so this is just a diagram uh, of immune complexes getting deposited. Another good fact that you can remember is um, whenever the process is immune mediated, right? Whenever a glomerulonephritis is immune mediated, the complex deposition will occur sub epithelially, right? So there is epithelium, there is a basement membrane, and then there is the vascular endothelium. So whenever it is immune mediated, the immune complex is sub epithelial. Whenever the process is inflammatory, it will be sub endothelial. Okay. So in case of uh, PSGN, which has immune complex formation, in the case of membranous nephropathy, which also has immune complex formation, the deposits will be sub epithelial. Okay. Um, so I guess yes. Thanks for watching. Please give a thumbs up and subscribe for more.